Hey guys! Welcome to Mama's Boys. In this program, we will meet priests from around the globe. We will discuss interesting features of their lives, from their humble beginnings, their calling, the churches, and more. On our last episode for Season 1 of Mama's Boys, Mama Mary's Boys on CLTV, our guest is a Kapampangan Bishop. He is none other than Most Reverend Roberto C. Magliari of the Diocese of San Jose, Nueva Ecija. Let us get to know more about him up close and personal here on Mama's Boys, Mama Mary's Boys. Hello Bishop! Uh, thank you so much for this interview, po. Uh, kindly tell us something about yourself, po, Bishop. So, good morning, Karen. Uh, I am uh, Bishop Roberto Maliari of the Diocese of San Jose. And I was born in Santol, Pampanga. I studied my uh, elementary school in... Uh, uh, Masantol uh, Public School. I entered the seminary when I was uh, 12 years old in uh, Mother of Good Counsel Seminary. And uh, then I, I left for one year. And I had a regency. I studied in UST, mm. Arts and Letters. And from there, uh, after a year, I went back to the seminary, San Carlos Seminary. Mm -hmm. uh, so I completed my uh, philosophy in uh, San Carlos and then theology. Mm -hmm. and Bishop, you said a while ago that you entered the seminary at the age of 12. Yeah. Uh, how come at the very young age you entered at the seminary? Yeah, I I would say uh, it was a calling, mm -hmm. but it was uh, through a catechist who was teaching us, uh, and uh, once uh, she told us that if we enter the seminary and become priests, uh, our parents will go to heaven. Oh, wow. <laughs> Maybe I wanted so much my parents to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why as soon as I got home, I told my parents that I wanted to become a priest. Mm -hmm. And I think I was then uh, grade four. And uh, then I forget, I I forgot all about it. And uh, But my parents kept kept it in their hearts and mm -hmm. <laughs> when I graduated grade six they uh, uh, requested an appointment with Archbishop Pashano Niseto mm -hmm. who was then our rector mm -hmm. in uh, in the seminary and uh, then uh, during the Fiesta of San Miguel uh, uh, where uh, uh, he was invited uh, for for the fiesta, so in one of the houses there in Mazantol, and uh, then he asked me why I wanted to become a priest, <laughs> and then I told him uh, because I want my parents to go to heaven. <laughs> wow! <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Bishop, uh, who are your inspirations in entering the seminary and? Entering as a priest and also a bishop. Yes, uh, actually, I, I I don't remember any, anybody. What, but that experience mm -hmm. uh, really, uh, it was that experience that uh, inspired me to become 
a priest. Um. Mm-hmm. And so after uh, grade six, I went to the seminary. And mm-hmm. I, at first, I was afraid because I did, I didn't realize I had to to take an entrance exam. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, good enough, I was able to pass the entrance exam. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, Bishop, how many years have you been in the ministry? In the ministry, I think I will uh, be 39 years wow. in the ministry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was ordained in 1982, mm-hmm. uh, so 2021, so it's, mm-hmm. it's 39 years in the ministry. Mm-hmm. What were your previous assignments for Bishop? Yes, I was in, in the seminary. Uh, Mother of Good Counsel Seminary. Uh, as soon as I was ordained, I was assigned in a parish uh, in uh, uh, Kalulut, mm-hmm. uh, St. Vincent Ferrer, but only for six months. Mm-hmm. After six months, I was uh, assigned in the seminary as spiritual director of the high school department. Then after two years, I was transferred to the to the uh, philosophy department. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was also uh, two years there mm-hmm. as spiritual director. And then uh, I uh, applied for a sabbatical leave. Mm-hmm. And then I volunteered in the preschool of Asia in, uh, in Tagaytay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if you heard about the Focolare movement. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have a school there uh, for uh, communitarian spirituality. So mm-hmm. I was uh, assigned uh, there to, to help mm-hmm. uh, to, and also to establish communion among diocese and priests and uh, to make an experience of communion among mm-hmm. us. Pardon me for asking, Bishop, but mm-hmm. why did you... Uh, come up with uh, uh, applying for a sabbatical leave and what is sabbatical leave for Bishop? For Uh, our viewers' sake. (laughs) Usually, uh, it's uh, just like Sabbath, no? Mm -hmm. Sabbath. (laughs) It's a day of rest. So Mm -hmm. it's... uh, And the truth was, I... uh, I thought... God was calling me to become a religious. I, uh, I was inspired by Francis of Assisi, mm-hmm. uh, who uh, really uh, uh, gave everything to God. And he yeah. <laughs> lived uh, a poor life. So I wanted to, to be like him, not to, mm-hmm. to live a radical life. When we return, we will still be with Bishop Bobet. Stay tuned on Mama's Boys, Mama Mary's Boys. This is Asel Santos. Catch me and other artists on the Mangdaan Taon ng Kapaskuhan, an online Christmas concert on December 14 at 7 p.m. via Facebook and YouTube channel of Limang City. You are still watching Mama's Boys. Mama Mary's Boys. Please like and share our social media accounts to know more about our Mama's Boys. Back on our interview with Bishop Bobet. Uh, it was the reason I wanted to discern and, and uh, then see whether the Lord is really uh, asking me to, to be a Franciscan. Mm-hmm. But then, uh, living in Tagaytay, I understood that the, the Focolati movement uh, was also inspired by Francis of Assisi. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because the foundress, uh, Chiara Lubic, uh, got her new name uh, mm-hmm. uh, from, uh, from Claire. Uh, Chiara is, is the Italian uh, word for Claire. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, Same Claire of Assisi. Yeah, yeah. So, I, and then also the, 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 the spirituality of the Focolare movement uh, uh, somehow uh, has also similarity with the, with the spirituality of Francis of Assisi. Mm-hmm. So I 
I opted to stay there. Actually, I wanted, I was already uh, uh, disposed to to be ready for everything, <laughs> mm -hmm. to be ready to go anywhere, uh, even to China, you know, for <laughs> to go for uh, missions and mm -hmm. uh, be available for for the movement for mm -hmm. the Komalani movement. But then you came back to the to the mission. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, our Archbishop Aniceto was then our Archbishop. Eh? He uh, talked to me mm -hmm. and he wanted me to come back mm -hmm. because we needed a spiritual director in, in the seminary. And so he said, uh, maybe you can uh, be the spiritual director of the theology department. Mm -hmm. So it was the reason why uh, I went back. And I understood that to, to be ready to go anywhere meant uh, even to go back to the dice, to the Archdiocese of San Fernando. Mm -hmm. So that was the reason I, I went back to the Archdiocese. What made you decide to accept your role as a bishop? Uh, one thing, uh, when the Nuncio told me, I think it was December 23, I told him, uh, I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> I, I only feel uh, that I am overwhelmed and afraid and I uh, feel uh, uh, overwhelmed by the, by the task of the bishop and, and also I feel I'm not worthy and etc. So usually the, the nuncio uh, would give uh, uh, the uh, priest nominated for uh, the office of bishop mm -hmm. He would give them one hour to, to stay in the chapel and then after an hour to decide whether they will say yes or no. An to hour, to Bishop? Yeah. <laughs> but he gave me 10 days. Ah. So, but then it was uh, December 23, so, and then December 24, I was preparing already for, for my Christmas uh, homily. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember I was... Uh, reading uh, uh, the homily of uh, Benedict uh, mm -hmm. the 16th and uh, no, I mean, he, he actually uh, 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 had uh, several points in, in his homily first uh, do not be afraid mm -hmm. uh, the words of the angel to uh, Mary mm -hmm. <laughs> and then he, he said uh, the Holy Spirit will overshadow you, and uh, and then uh, do the will of uh, of God like mm. Mary. <laughs> mm. So that the homily of the Holy Father, uh, really, uh, I, I felt it was it was the Lord talking to me <laughs> because it was, it was at the time that I was struggling to to mm. make a decision. So it was as if the Lord Himself guided me really to to make the decision. But uh, one thing I realized, uh, the Lord loves me immensely mm -hmm. and, uh, and that I have uh, uh, so much really uh, to thank the Lord uh, for the many blessings He has given me as first as, as a person mm -hmm. and then as a priest. and. Uh, and then to be nominated as uh, as a bishop, it meant uh, really that uh, God has His eyes on me, <laughs> mm -hmm. as His special uh, uh, love, you no know, expression of His love for me. Mm -hmm. So I was also overwhelmed by by God's love, mm -hmm. and uh, and then I said, if uh, if. Uh, this is how big God's love is even if I give my life to him mm -hmm. as a bishop it will not be enough yet <laughs> to, to really uh, thank him uh, and to, to love him in return mm -hmm. uh, isn't it bishops has motto for, uh, bishop yes for yes yes uh, what's your motto yeah my motto is in manus to us mm -hmm in manus to us, into your hands, uh, to complete it, in ma into your hands, Father. Mm -hmm. 
Actually, when uh, I told Archbishop Paniseto about the motto, uh, his immediate reaction was, are you <laughs> dying already? <laughs> <laughs> because this, this, we know that this is uh, one of the last words of Jesus right. when he was dying on the cross. <laughs> yes, we shall. And then I, I told him, no, I just feel like I have to entrust my whole life Mm -hmm. and even my ministry as a bishop, not mm -hmm. to the Lord. Uh, How do bishops uh, uh, choose their motto? Po? Actually, uh, when uh, I was uh, nominated bishop and mm -hmm. when I said yes and, uh, to the bishop, I, I requested for a retreat and then, uh, and then in the retreat, I requested a a brother priest to help me <laughs> uh, to discern and then uh, see what uh, uh, I can choose as my as my motto. Mm -hmm. But usually, uh, you know, like uh, my motto, uh, it, it has been also uh, uh, my life. Uh, it has been my my way of living. Mm -hmm. My my way of living the faith it's really entrusting always my my life to, to the Lord and uh, realizing my my weaknesses and uh, uh, my own sinfulness mm -hmm. <laughs> that uh, I can do things only uh, if the Lord is with me and mm -hmm. that I am nothing without him mm -hmm. What's your most uh, memorable experience as a priest, Paul Bishop? As a priest, I think my work with the Family Life Apostolate. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, my my work also in the seminary. My you know, uh, those days were, were beautiful. Also because I was living with brother priests, mm -hmm. and uh, there we had time really to sing together, <laughs> time mm -hmm. to play. When we return, we will still be with Bishop Bobet. All this and more on Mama's Boys, Mama Mary's Boys. Join me, my father, Jose Marie Chan, Christian Bautista, Eric Santos, Aisel Santos, Sheila Valderrama, and many more as we perform on Limang Daang Taon ng Kapaskuhan, an online Christmas concert that will be broadcast on December 14th on Limang Siglos Facebook and YouTube channels. Welcome back on Mama's Boys, Mama Mary's Boys. Don't forget to like and share our social media accounts to know more about our Mama's Boys. Back on our interview with Bishop Bobet. How about your memorable experience uh, as a bishop? Memorable experience? I think everything is memorable. <laughs> no, one thing, uh, one thing, uh, I be coming here. I remember uh, the words of Benedict uh, to me you know, in, uh, in uh, his letter to me. He said that I uh, should uh, teach God's people and uh, help them see the face of God in the poorest of the poor. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I kept this uh, uh, in my heart. <laughs> I remember there was a time when uh, I had my uh, pastoral visit, my mm -hmm. first pastoral visit. I requested the police if we can also visit at least uh, three poorest of the poor in the Paris. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, I had a chance to, to see the, the situation of the of the parishioners and I, I met the uh, uh, elderly people who are not being taken care of. Uh, one of the, the things that uh, that was born was to to be able to build uh, a home for the elderly mm. uh, where we would uh, uh, take care of the abandoned elderly. But uh, I understood that the poor they have uh, they have uh, uh, actually uh, uh, very little needs. Mm -hmm. They need only a place where they could lay their 
their their head uh, mm -hmm. to be able to rest. They they don't need the uh, uh, really uh, uh, a lot of things. Uh, they need only a little to be able to feel their stomach. <laughs> Bishop, what do you usually do during your free time? During my free time, I uh, sometimes I, I go out with the Archbishop Dong. <laughs> 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 and then uh, if we have time to swim, we swim and mm. then we have time. <laughs> and uh, just to, to be able to relax and uh, and then at times I, now here we have a place, so many places where to walk, uh, mm -hmm. we have mountains and... Uh, do you also uh, plant trees and do you like plants <laughs> also, Bishop? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. of course, yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, here in the, in the Bishop's house, this used to be, you know, this used to be, uh, yeah, here we have only ornamental plants before. Mm -hmm. So I had to, to remove all the or ornamental plants <laughs> and then start planting fruit trees and then uh, other trees <laughs> that would uh, be beneficial also for, for people, uh, some uh, herbal uh, mm. plants, uh, medicines. Mm. <laughs> so I, I use them usually for salad, mm -hmm. uh, vegetable salad. And What's your message, uh, Bishop, your brother priests? Uh, to my brother priest, uh, this is, uh, I used to tell them the pandemic is, uh, is an opportune time to first to leave poverty mm -hmm. and uh, to live simplicity, to live simply. And uh, this is uh, a time uh, when we are really uh, ch more challenge uh, to give ourselves no, to one another. Uh, in fact, in all the parishes of uh, of the diocese, I requested the priests if they they could start uh, the community pantry, mm -hmm. so that uh, we'll have uh, a way also to to uh, to be able to reach out. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, to the to the rich who can give, mm -hmm. and uh, to the poor who, who are very much in need uh, today because of the pandemic. So uh, it's a a way to establish uh, uh, this uh, system uh, where uh, the rich can be challenged to to give, and the poor. Uh, will will uh, uh, only get what they what they really need. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's it's a constant reminder because they, the 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 temptation is to get more uh, mm -hmm. more than uh, what you need. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so so now is a chance uh, for my for us uh, my brother priest to to be able to 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 reach out to the poorest of the poor. Uh, I used to say that. Uh, uh, the Catholic bishops of the Philippines uh, had so many plans now, mm. for the celebration of the 500 years of Christianity. <laughs> <laughs> but then the pandemic came, and and then I I uh, realized, and I started to ask myself, uh, is this not really the best way to test? Uh, whether the faith that we receive uh, from the Lord uh, mm -hmm. and that after 500 years that uh, that this faith is uh, really intact mm -hmm. and that uh, it will help me even to survive this pandemic and that uh, it will uh, give me the grace to be more creative and loving mm -hmm. and uh, to be more creative and uh, in evangelizing because uh, especially our young people, uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, it's important that our young people uh, make the most of this time really to to be able to uh, uh, learn more about social communication mm -hmm. and make uh, maximum use of the, uh, the modern means of communication. Uh, you are more experts in mm -hmm. this and therefore it's important 
to realize that these things they can be opportunities to to spread the gospel to uh, to preach the good news thank you so much uh, bishop for allowing us to interview you po and to know many things about you yeah we would like to thank most reverend roberto c malyari Diocese of San Jose Nueva Ecija Social Communications Ministry, St. Joseph the Worker Cathedral, Diocese of San Jose Nueva Ecija, for making this interview possible. We would also want to thank our viewers for watching Mama's Boys, Mama Mary's Boys. See you soon on the next season, only here at CLTV. There you have it, guys. Thank you for joining us in this episode of Mama's Boys. Hope to see you in our future episode. This has been your host, Karen Dane. Jamata Raishunen!